Hey everybody, it's Sophie and Marco, Dish Out on the Movies, and are you, we are... Are you going to apologize for yesterday, Sophie? We are doing a review of um, Dark Winds, episode Why? 2. Why today? Season 2. Why today? Called Na Nikadi. Why today, Sophie? Means your name is Navajo. That's Sophie. What... And we're doing it today because we got messed up yesterday with our because time. Because you took a nap. <laughs> I don't know what Mark was talking about. But anyway, I apologize that we're a day late. So what's the episode called? Let's see. It's Na Nikadi. <laughs> it means your name is Navajo. <laughs> At least that's what <laughs> I, when I Google translated it. At least that's what it said. Na Nikadi. They have some kind of uh, explanation uh, show that's on uh, the AMC channel about the whole series. And they mention in it that Navajo is like the hardest, one of the hardest languages to learn. So, I I, I would spell it, but it's a very long word and I don't think you care. But uh, apparently it's based on... Oh, wait a minute. This is episode one. I apologize. It's based on the uh, Tony Hillerman book called The People of Darkness. So if you've ever read The People of Darkness, you might recall some of the but things. That that the, sounds like really racist, like the, they're people of darkness. It means witchcraft oh, and okay. bad people. Because I was like, wow. Well, not witchcraft necessarily, but people who are bad, who are uh, evil monsters they they talk in fact this episode they come right in and said some people there's monsters everywhere so uh, anyway uh what the it's same characters are back joe lee porn and um manuelita or bernie emmanuelito oh re- no it's man well never mind it's Bernie, <laughs> Bernadette, but her name is Bernie, and then you have Jim Chi, and he is now a private investigator, and he was, he's grown his hair out, uh, so it's a lot longer, it's about two, two, three inches longer. And he's grown boobs. Marco, would you please stop it? <laughs> And he's wearing some kind of, and I don't know if this is a new style or if they did this for the show, but I haven't seen it. But, you know, I haven't been looking for stuff like that in the summer, but it looks like a leisure, a kind of a modern leisure suit from the 70s. And it's the same, almost the same kind of style, but a little bit more modern. The collar of the suit is uh, not as wide and the shirt though looks looks like a shirt you would wear in the 70s you know the um when you go to the disco like uh john travolta it looks like a suit from that or the uh prom uh tuxedos from that time it looks it, it, only it's more modern it's not as uh it's not pastel or anything but it was he and he said Joe Lee Porn even commented and he said, Oh, this is a new uh this is the new kind of fabric. It's like space age or some something like that. Some kind of weird thing that I I don't care for. But anyway, he's a private investigator. I thought this took place in the seventies. I don't think so, Marco. I thought it did. Okay, I don't know. I don't think so. I thought it took place in the seventies. Oh my God! <laughs> anyway, um, maybe that's why he's wearing a '70s suit, Safi. Well, it's not quite a '70s suit. If they wanted to get a real '70s suit, they could have gone to a thrift shop and found one somewhere. They don't have any cell phones. I don't know. Because it's the '70s. Okay. Well, if it's base, I don't know. I'm sorry. I apologize. I thought it took place today because when you go to a Navajo reservation, it's just like going, probably kind of like going to Cuba. You have older vehicles. They drive them until they're dead uh, because they, you know, 
people can't afford to buy new, brand new, state-of-the-art vehicles. And, um, you know, people are living in the middle of nowhere. They don't have running water. They have rainwater collection tanks and drains on but their you, homes. You know what they do have, though, is uh, good, good swimming. Oh, God. Because Emanuelito is a swimming star. I, I wish Marco would quit teasing. And So anyway, they open the show with a shootout. And, um, and I had to look back like three times because it's very dark. And what they're doing is there's a, there's a really bad guy and he is the focus, part of the focus of what's going on in the story. And they're having a shootout on his trailer. And it's Manuelita, or Bernie, I'll just call her Bernie, and Joe Leaphorn all by themselves. And then they show them in the trailer. They had to jump to the ground, fly flat, lay flat, because the guy has a machine gun, like a military one that you put on a tripod and he's shooting at them and uh in the trailer it's his trailer and they thought they were going to surprise him but of course he's so smart he surprised them but they're not that surprised but anyway because he's so bad and dangerous he's the monster that everybody refers to and then at right after that they put six days before so this is six days later. So anyway, to go back, so they're going back in time, and that's where they begin the rest of the episode. Go ahead, Marco. Well, I thought that this was a pretty good episode. It was reminiscent to the first season's first episode, and that it was a setup episode. And, you know, the opening scene, of course, they showed... This hook, like in the first season, they showed that robbery. And then they're like, oh, what happens after that? Who knows? And uh, it was it was a good setup episode. It's just... I'm not really enthusiastic about the show because it's only six episodes. And that's kind of like a, a bummer because I thought, you know, they did a good job with the first season, kind of, except for that awful finale. Uh, the short finale, the the midget finale. Uh, I thought, you know, maybe since they did well, they get more episodes. And I thought it was a huge letdown that, you know, we're going to have another constrained uh, story. Uh, and then I also felt like it, it was it was good in that in this episode, all the characters were equally in it. Like it didn't feel like an Emanuelito episode where she just swims the whole episode. Uh, it didn't feel like a Joe Sleephorn episode. Uh, it didn't just feel like a Jim Chi booby man episode. It felt like, you know, equal. And that's what I think would be better, is if it was an equal show where they all got a chance to shine every episode uh, because that would be more entertaining. And uh, the only thing, though, is that Jim Chi is like a private investigator now. And in the promos, I thought I saw him wearing the police uniform. Well, maybe and he will in the end. I just think, like, I don't, I don't want to watch him be a private investigator the whole season. Like, you know, they did that whole thing the first season where he's a part of the FBI I just I just don't want to see him be a, a P.I. this season. Like, I just don't. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah. I mean, it was just, it was a good episode, though. Um, I can't really think of a favorite moment because I just felt like the whole episode was pretty equal. <laughs> Excuse me, and how good it was, so... I don't really have any favorite moment, uh, but it it was a good start. It's just, I don't know. It it could it could get better, I think, and I I think it will. 
And there was a lot of funny stuff to talk about, too, Safi. Yeah. You know. So, anyway, there's, uh, even though it's six days, they go now to six days before, uh, a car, a guy is going out to his truck, and he's at a clinic where Emma is, and she's taking this, this, uh, kid who got injured, and, and, uh, she's in getting a cup of coffee and a machine, and the cup, you know, she's having trouble with the cup coming down, you know, it's one of those kind of machines, and then the coffee goes into it, because Navajos like to drink coffee, and, um, which I know sounds weird, but that's in these books, they're always, ha everybody's always having coffee, so. And I'm it is not... kind of funny, because, you know, it did kind of feel like they listened to some feedback from the first season, because Joe Sleephorn, you know, it didn't really feel like he was sleepy this episode. No, he was and uh, active during the whole episode. It was funny how, like, the first thing he does is drink coffee, and it's like, you know, that's what I said he should do the, fir the first season. I was like, he needs to drink a cup of coffee. For real. <laughs> and he did. Anyway, a car bomb, a, a guy has just been in the clinic and Emma is looking out the window at him while she's waiting for her coffee to in the machine to finish uh, pouring into the cup. Or, what? yeah. And uh, she sees him go to his truck and then all of a sudden there's this explosion and his truck blew up and it was a bomb. And that... Uh, continues on that kind of sets off the whole episode with uh violence Ex an explosion and then you know you saw it with that uh shootout so there's quite a bit you know isn't just quiet and nothing's going on and this was better than the first season's first episode too and uh then you they show jim chi and he's doing one of these little rinky he has a little rinky dink uh like a cl uh client uh she's she just needed to find out who's been stealing her pinon nuts cuz that's a tree they have in the in New Mexico is a pinon tree Emanuela really, No, this woman, this oh. old lady and uh he he was investigating who was stealing okay, her yeah. pinon nuts. And maybe she sells them or maybe she just wants to know who's taking them because she can't do whatever she wants to do with them because they're gone all the time and um they show that's like a little rinky dink thing and they do this thing uh they talk about this in the books where they have some beautiful piece of jewelry or a belt buckle or um one of those necklaces men have in the southwest i can't think of what they're called it's a special, like a string, and there's like turquoise at the end, and um, or bracelets or necklaces, and they use those to pawn uh, at a pawn shop or to pay some kind of a debt at a store. And this lady gives, she gives him a few dollars, and then she gives him the uh, ring, her special tur beautiful turquoise ring, and as payment. And of course, he doesn't want to take that. He gives it back, and then he gets a call, and he's invited out to this uh, ranch, a very, very well-known, expensive, famous, not famous, but it's a well-known rancher who's very rich, and to see his wife, and she has found a box that was stolen, and she has the name of the guy, because they saw him, or they had videotape of who took it? I don't can't remember. I think I they, thought that that place kind of looked like a nursing home. No, that was their house. <laughs> it was a beautiful ranch, and it was very expansive and big. But the foyer foyer was dark, which that was kind of weird. But anyway. Stop it, Safi! You're agitating my reviewing. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. Isn't that hilarious, Safi? She's like. Don't question, don't agitate me, Jim Chi. You're agitating my oh, yeah. breathing. The woman is Jerry, played by Jerry Ryan, 
who's been on Star Trek or something. Star Wars. Star Wars. I don't know. Star she's Trek. A very, he's very tall, and she was as tall as he was. And she played the wife, and she wasn't, she didn't look old. She looked really young. Well, she looked a lot younger than what I remember from the book. Uh, but anyway, she had an oxygen tank. That was kind of funny. And he was, <laughs> she had said this box was stolen. All she wanted, she didn't want the person punished. She just wanted the box back. It belonged to her husband. And she paid him $500, and she said she'd give him 2000 more or 2500 more, I don't know which it was, if the box was recovered, and if not, he would still get to keep the $500. And so that's when the the things that uh, Joe Lee porn, the car bomb, that's when that converges with what Jim Chi, the case he was working on, because the person who took the box supposedly is related to the guy who was just killed in the car bomb. So um, they both just accidentally meet up at the same place. And then if it's discovered that he's gone, Jim Chi had just been talking to the guy. He said he wanted the box back. The guy drew him a map and said, I just need to return the box to the woman. She does, they don't want to, uh, press charges and he said he took it because his father told him to take it back because that husband of that ranch that rancher person is put a hex or something or a curse on her his father and that's why he's sick and dying not because of cancer and so um so that's when they converge and they're they work on they're working on the same case. And the, there's also kind of like this other case going on where Emanuelita, uh, or there's like the stoner guy. It's a goofy, It's called, I would call it a goofy case. And he said that he, he was uh, knocked out by aliens or something. And, and there's some sort of like an alien sheep. And there was some sort of a spaceship wreck. And she goes with him, and she finds, like, some sort of a U.S. Uh, Air Force. Air Force uh, thing. It's, I don't know what it was, like a nose cone or something? I don't know. Of some kind of uh, aircraft? And she's Nothing like... Nothing else, just the nose cone. She's like, you are an idiot, and you're stupid, and you need to get off the drugs, because there's a Navajo <coughs> man inside of you somewhere. And then she, like, taps him on the forehead, and, you know, it's like, she was really hilarious this episode. It's like, yeah, keep that up. It's really hilarious. And then she steals his chips, and she eats, like, an entire bag of chips. Like, like she really likes chips, apparently, as well as swimming. And uh, then all of a sudden, she runs into the alien sheep thing. She doesn't thing. run. She spots it. It's standing in the middle of the road, and it's some kind of weird ram, and its horns are all kind of screwy. It does look odd. It doesn't look like... The horns aren't right. I and, thought, is there going to be a shapeshifter this season? Yeah, I know. I don't no, think so. Not this season. No, this is going to be a bad guy. This is going to be a silent mute guy who looks like a... You no, know, he doesn't say much. And in the book, he doesn't say much either. So she picks that up and she takes it back to the station. The sheep. And uh, she puts it in a jail cell. And then she does her little scowl. You know, she scowled like the whole episode. Except for this one part where she put the stoner guy in the cell. And she kind of smiled a little bit. But, like, the whole episode, she's just scowling continuously. It's pretty scary. It's not the stoner guy. There was another guy. Oh, she it was She was chasing him in her car, oh, and yeah. he was riding a horse. And he was a young man, too. And I don't know what he did. I couldn't understand it. And um, she, they, what happened was her car got stuck or something, and they both were riding the horse back to the police station. And she was late for work, and they were outside, and uh, she came in and put the guy into jail. That's the guy. The stoner guy was already there, 
he had come to make a report about what happened with the quote aliens that he thought he saw and he is he is constant he's like he's high all the time that's why we're calling him a stoner and they say that too she said she said that he marco just said that you know, you got to get off all the drugs that you're on because there's a Navajo man inside trying to get out or something. So she's, he just said that. And so that's a different guy. There's two guys. So anyway, she's she's been taking care of all these smaller, goofy, I call them goofy cases. And she and like he said, that she brings back that sheep, but it's really weird. It's a ram, but it's got, the horns are all, weird i don't know they grew wrong or something i don't know that's why it looked weird and alien because it wasn't normal okay so what happens An another man gets killed and he they show him with the bad guy this is the bad guy is going to be a prominent during the whole season and he was actually the one and i watched the i watched the very first part of the episode he's the one that they're going to uh be dealing with the entire probably the entire show and um he had hired an investigator to look for i think his mother and uh he showed a picture the investigator they were meeting at some bar or something and then uh <clears throat> the bad guy gave him money and he, in an envelope and he put it the guy put it in his coat pocket and then he went to the bathroom and the bad guy went in there and killed him and got his money back. So they show that. And then Jim Chi Chung Ching uh, meets up with Joe Sleephorn and they go find the box. And inside the box there's all the stuff. Well it was, it was opened. It's all strewn all over the ground at the place where he said it would be. That's why I said inside the box there was all this stuff, not there is all this stuff. Because if the, I said there is all this stuff, that would be saying well, it's in the box, but I said there was all the stuff in the box because it's out of the box. Well, but, but also it had been burned. Some of it had been burned because uh, when he went to pick up, he saw... Uh, Joe Leaphorn saw a belt buckle. Joe Sleephorn freaks out because his son's belt buckle is in there. The, and what so he was wearing when he was killed. He thinks that this guy is connected to his son's death. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they get shot at and Jim Chi takes a little shot in the shoulder. Well, he takes two shots, but by the end of it. Okay. And then they have a little shootout and then he gets away. And I, I feel like, is that going to happen, like, the whole season? Like, did that happen in the book where, like, he he just, he just pulls up on them. He goes, like, pew, pew, pew. And then he gets away, and then he pulls up on them, like, <laughs> over and over again. Well, he didn't have a gun with him. That's like a video game type of thing. He Jim Chi did not have any firearm. And he was using Joe Leaphorn's handgun and while jo Joe Leaphorn ran to the truck. And it was locked. He couldn't get in it, and he uh, he had to break open the window to get his rifle. And because uh, and then you see the bad guy. The bad guy is there. The one who is shown at the beginning of the episode. The one and the one who was in the bar. So, like I said, he's going to be part of the whole season. So I guess there was a lot of action. It's just, uh, you know, we were when we watched it, we were kind of distracted a little bit, so it was hard to uh, pay attention. There were so many commercials too, like there were like thousands of commercials, practically like more than the episode. There was commercials, uh, and then another thing would be that Safi didn't mention. Joe Sleephorn's wife, she said that they need to do a ceremony because there's been so much violence They're that they've been balance. around. And so that's going to be important, I guess. Maybe they'll show that. Otherwise, why talk about it on screen? And then Joe Sleephorn did a lot of chores at the beginning of the episode, and Sophie thought it was weird because they never showed that in the book. 
No, he, they didn't have all that. They had sheep. They had a, he had a big motorcycle. And he had a sheep dog, which they kind of barely showed. But And that's common. Uh, on the reservation, there are sheep ranches on the, uh, you know, little ones. They might have a little bunch of sheep. Uh, but they, there. I have a postcard of of one, a, a, an old postcard, and um, some people have sheep, and so they show him having sheep, and I don't remember that in any any of the books, Emma and he having sheep, and then he's we're also working on a motorcycle, which. I don't remember them having a motorcycle, so that was different too. So. I give the episode a B plus. It's it's kind of teetering on an A minus, but just if an episode is an A, it has to be a little bit more personally special to me. Uh, like you know, just the you know, Safi said like, well, Marco, there hasn't been anything else that's been on, and it's like, <laughs> you're. Honor, Safi, uh, that have one of the greatest television episodes of all time, uh, practically a perfect episode in that season this year. So, you know, there is a little bit of a, I don't know, like, it's just, you know when an episode is a B episode, and you know when an episode is an A episode. And for me, I just couldn't go to an A for this episode. But I did like it. I thought it was really uh, entertaining and definitely better than last season with uh, all that weird stuff. Yeah, I think they were finding their way uh, in the last episode. It's and, just, or last season. It's sorry. unfortunate that, again, it's only going to be six episodes, which is like... They're doing that with everything, and it's just so gay. Well, even, because it's like that's not a TV show; it's a mini series. And they're even—I uh, don't know what it was they were advertising. Maybe Marco remembers, but somebody's making something, and it's only four episodes. It's and, like some sort of a superhero thing or something. Yeah, and I—that's like, that's not what? a TV show. That's a mini series. But I, what happened was, after last season, I started reading uh, the Tony Hellerman books again. And then I stopped. I don't know why. And I was, I guess I was just wanted to read other things and then come back to it. Because I like to, like, go around and be, sometimes and just mix it up. And uh, I didn't go back to it. But I had, I had read that particular book. So I, I just, so I just read it last year. So I read it. I remembered. You read I started the remembering. You read the Dark People book read, last it's year. It's not the Dark People. <laughs> it's people of darkness. That means that they have uh they're evil. <laughs> so anyway, if I thought it was good, I gave it an A cuz it did uh but it and I thought they mixed it up a lot and I liked that they showed all the people and like Marco, I hope and I cuz in the series in the books, Jim Chi is back to being a police person, and and he one thing that makes him different, I think, from the books, because I'm sure that I'm not remembering this wrong, is he doesn't he cares more about money, having a bigger salary, because even Joe Leaphorn asked him in the truck, why don't you come back and. Um, and he said something about the money, and then he was wearing that suit and said it was the latest thing, and uh, you know, and I don't remember him being he. And, and another thing too, like I said before in the last season, he wants to be a I don't know what they call, it, but you know, a singer. And she, Marco just mentioned that Emma. Lee Porn said, you know, we're out of balance, we've got these, and they care, and there's a word for it, I don't remember the word, they say it in this, the episode, uh, Navajos like to be in balance, and that means, and then when all this evil and these bad things are happening, they're not in balance, so they do a sing, a special sing, and it's, they might do a sand painting, and there's a person, a special person, who does a, sings or chants or whatever, and Joel and Jim Chi 
in the book series, he was he had a relative who was kind of mentoring him and tutoring him to be a, a quote singer. And that was, a, he wanted to be a police person, but he also wanted to be a singer too. And he, there's no interest there and I of think, doing that yet in, and, in and this episode. That's why it's so bad that it's six episodes is because they don't have any time to do anything, uh, basically. Like, it, it's very reminiscent of Hell on Wheels, kind of. Well, that where, was longer, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. They, have, but they didn't have just six episodes. It, it's similar with the character, like the main character in that, where it, at the beginning of every season almost, he would have to be reintroduced to all the characters because he would leave and go there and go there and go there. And it feels like the same thing with Jim Chi, where, like, I would prefer to see him more, like, settled in to that place with these characters rather than just be this rogue uh, character. Yeah. Because there's only six episodes, and so you don't really have (laughs) much time to do that. And at least in Hell on Wheels, you know, let's see, like... uh, it took him basically like one or two episodes every season to be reintegrated into the universe. So, you know, it wasn't like this where it's like the whole season he's not there with them. Yeah. Yeah, but at least in this uh, episode, they, like Marco earlier said, that they gave e- pretty much equal time to e- each character. Yeah. And so uh, I just hope... I mean, I'm I'm wondering if they're going to be doing that because after this, they're going to do more seasons, and if he's going to be, uh, like in the books, he's going to be a healer, a person who does sing. And it's worrisome too because like how many seasons are they going to li- allow them to have? Like yeah, you know no. that nowadays, no TV show is allowed to go past five seasons. Because that's just, that's wrong. You can't do that because that's, that's bad. So, like, I, I really hope they do, though, because that's different. queer. It's different, too, because it's Native American. And what other shows, maybe Yellowstone? I don't know. I don't watch Yellowstone, but, I mean, what other, what other TV shows or movies are showing Native Americans? There's, like, another TV show, but it's ending. It, uh <laughs> I think it only had like three seasons and it's going to end now. I don't know, but I mean, they want diversity and I mean, this is America. They're Americans. They're the real America, the the soul of America. And uh, it's, and they're good books. Tony Hellerman books and his daughter Anne, they have written a really good series of books. She's continuing to write. He passed away. But she took up the series, and so they it's it's a good book series. It's a good thing. Um, they have a fan base, and uh, it, they're they're interesting. So I just it's good to know about different uh, all the different uh, aspects of the Navajo culture. They have a humongous reservation down in the Southwest. So, and the area of the country is beautiful. So it it would be nice if they do more seasons and if and that they are doing this at all. I really appreciate it. So anyway, if you like this uh, video, give it a thumbs up and become one of our subscribers. We welcome new subscribers. We welcome your feedback. Ex- and... Except if you're a person of darkness. Oh God! Like like the Taco Bell woman from the first season. She was a person of darkness. No. Taco Bell darkness. Okay, I don't. I know what he's talking about. I guess he's talking about the witch. Yeah. Uh. She had Taco Bell. Well, this is different. This is this guy isn't a witch. He's not the bad guy in the whole uh, series. Is not this this series is not a uh, a Navajo at all. In fact, he's not from even from the area. He was there looking for meeting with a private investigator and uh, looking, he's been looking for his mother. And uh, does he want to, does he want to kill his mother? I don't know. She abandoned him or something. 
I, we'll, we'll see it. We'll see what they say about it. But uh, he doesn't know what happened to her. And he's been fine. He's been hiring. I'll just go ahead and tell you. He's been hiring investigators for years and years looking for her. And he hasn't been successful. And so this is part of what drives his badness. Is he's uh, in a bad way about his upbringing and his origins. So, wow. <coughs> he was also in the military. Well, I, I I'll hope. Say that I just too. hope. I just hope he doesn't pussy out like the villain of last season and kill himself. No, <laughs> he won't. Unless they change it. Because that was trash. Yeah. There's no no. <laughs> He is uh, bad, just bad all the way around. He and there's there's nothing good about him at all, and there's no remorse. There's not going to be remorse. He's a cold blooded killer. There's no Navajo man inside of him waiting he's to come Navajo out. He's not Navajo at all. But maybe I told you he's maybe, not Navajo at all. Maybe there's a Navajo man inside <coughs> of all of us waiting to come out. Marco. <laughs> So goodbye, everybody. Bye.